Praise God. Let's just love Him together. Lord Jesus, I love You. Hallelujah. 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 Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. One flat, brother. Oh, He's a beautiful Christ. What a beautiful King of my heart is He. He's a beautiful What a beautiful Christ, mine evermore He shall be. He's a beautiful Christ. Oh, what a beautiful Christ. Oh, King of What a beautiful Christ, oh, mine evermore he shall be. He's a beautiful Christ. He's a beautiful Christ. I'm full of that message today. I'm thankful for Calvary. Praise God. If you take the sin of Adam and the guilt of Eve, his wife, and to this you add this factor that this sin spoils all of life. Out of this comes war and bloodshed, sins of hatred, lust, and pride. It was stacked in one great bundle. To my Jesus it was tied. Oh, it's no wonder that he stumbled as he walked up Calvary's road. It's no wonder that he cried out as the blood from his side flowed. Oh, it's no wonder all heaven blackened when the sins crushed the divine. It's no wonder my life was transformed when I saw those sins as mine. Oh, it's no wonder that he stumbled as he walked up Calvary's road. It's no wonder that he cried out as a sin from his side flowed. Oh, it's no wonder all heaven blackened as the sin crushed the divine. Oh, it's no wonder my life was transformed when I saw those sins as mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to be in His house today. Thank you, Brother Bass, for your confidence in asking us to do our little part today. We have a Christian school, and uh, 
kindergarten, they have a little test for the children. They have a piece of paper and little square blocks. And they'll have uh, pieces of fruit in every block. And then they'll have maybe a dog in one box. And uh, what they're trying to do, they ask the child, say, now I want you to look at this paper. And the one that doesn't fit in there, you mark that one that doesn't fit. So there's all kinds of oranges and apples and pears. And, and then there's the dog. So they mark the dog because it doesn't fit. Well, I kind of feel like the dog today. I don't fit, but I'm going to try to do my best. Brother Bass said for me to take my time. And uh, this is preaching that we have heard that will change us. I'm going to leave this service different today. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, we'll turn to Exodus, the fourth chapter. Beginning to read the first verse. While you're finding this, we are in the last days, and there are struggles that we all will face. And... uh, After 35 years of preaching, this last two years, I have gone through some things I thought I would never have to go through. Most of you fellows, brethren that we are close to here, know somewhat about it. And through it all, God's blessed us, give us revival. And uh, But the enemy of the church would like to shut the mouth of the ministry today and he's going to do everything he can to do it and I'm glad I'm serving a God and through all of this I suppose a lot of what I'm going to say today is going to be born in where I have traveled for the last little while and if I could encourage you today I would and Moses answered, fourth, verse, fourth chapter, first verse, and said, Behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. Exodus three twelve to 14. Now Moses was having a struggle here with somebody believing in him. Exodus three twelve to 14 God was talking to Moses. The longest private conversation recorded in the Old Testament between God and human individuals takes place in Exodus 3 and 1 to 4, 17, where God is trying to persuade Moses to accept the mission of serving as the Savior of the Jewish people. And... Uh, Finally, he got Moses to accept his assignment. 12 verse 7, he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this, this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, I want you to note this, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. When you bring the children of Israel of Egypt, you're going to serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and they shall say unto them, The God of our fathers has sent me unto you. They shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me Unto you. One more verse of scripture, Exodus 19 and 9. First of all, Moses said, What am I going to tell the people? They're not going to listen to me. 
And Jesus, or God, said unto them, He said, when they bring you out, you're going to serve me on this mount. And then 19th of Exodus 9, And the Lord said unto Moses, I am come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee. Let's say, hear when I speak with thee. And believe thee forever. They're going to hear when I speak to you, and they're going to believe thee forever. And then Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. Let's just ask the Lord to help us today. Lord Jesus, I love you. I appreciate you, and I ask you to help us, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Overshadow, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to talk to you a little while today on the burden of proof. On the burden of proof. They're going to stand on this mount and all the doubts which they had about him would be removed. We're living in a day when there is a pressure, my Lord, to perform. It sure is. We are living in an hour when they're reaching for the sensational. And uh, I'm here today, didn't know for sure whether I was going to make it or not. I got two or three folks in my church that are very, very sick. I would love to walk into the hospital room and uh, without reservation just pop my hand on their head and rebuke that sickness and it would be taken care of. And uh, sometimes we feel like if that would only happen, I wonder if that would inspire a revival. Because we're looking for the miraculous. And uh, Moses talked to God and he said, Lord, I don't know whether they... And the Lord said, put your hand on your side and, and pull it out. And it was leprosy. And then put it back in and pull it back out and it was healed. Throw down a rod, pick it up. And it goes into a serpent and back to a rod. He said, you're going to go to the land of Egypt and uh, you're going to perform some miracles there so that they will believe in you. So they will believe in you. So that you will see. And so nine or ten plagues, nine plagues and one uh, pronouncement, I suppose, of judgment was performed. And while this was happening... There was a faith in leadership. And so, it would appear like if we can get the miraculous to happen, that we would have vindication of our call, or we would have vindication of who we are, or people would listen to who we are. And uh, we're living in a world that believes in God. And uh, some believe in miracles. I understand they run a poll and 80% of the world believes in God. (laughs) And uh, the reason the world is so intensely secular in spite of the overwhelming belief in God, is that they do not believe that this God conveys His will to mankind. They believe that there is a supreme being out there and He is so great, but He has no interest in what we do, or what we say, or where we go, or what happens to us. 
And so when Moses began to talk, he, he was, I, I was thinking the other day, going through some things, and I thought, I can't, I really can't lead people where I have not been myself. I have got to, I've got to go from, and I love the tenor of this meeting, from glory to glory and from, from one dimension to another dimension in God. I don't ever want to become normal. And I don't want to become just average, Pentecostal. I don't ever want to stay where I am. I believe there's far more than I have ever tapped into that I can have today. In fact, I'll tell you something. I don't want to go back to where I was either. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't ever want to go back to where I was. I don't care if it's a year ago or two years ago. I don't want to go back to where I was. I don't want to stop here, but I want to continue on to find out what I can find from Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is an exciting journey, finding all there is to know about God. He's a God that hides Himself. I didn't find all there was to know about Him when I first found Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so, uh, uh, there is a world that does not believe that God does talk to mankind. The proof of who Moses was, was not going to be the ten plagues. Was not going to be the manna that fell from heaven. Was not going to be the stream that gushered out of a rock. But the proof of who Moses was in leadership is when the children of Israel could hear God talk to Moses. And Moses talked to God. I am glad for the ministry that can talk to God and that God can talk to the people because I don't have to perform miracles to have approval if I can get God to talk to me and me to talk to God. Hallelujah. And so it would, uh, the, the humanity does not believe this, so they, uh, they, they resent this. Miracles cannot suffice. And I'm just stopping to tell you, we're living in a world that's it's always the miraculous and oh my, the fire, way outstanding. Can I tell you something more than the sick being healed today was something that transpired in this service. I heard the voice of God and I want to keep my ear tuned to the voice of God. I want to familiarize myself to the voice of God. I can hear a lot of other voices, but I want to hear the voice of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, my sheep know my voice. I want to tune in to hear His voice. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It's not what I can see. It's not what I can see. It's what I can hear. Mary came out looking for him. Hallelujah. And she said, can you tell me where they have laid him? And he looked at her and he said, the only thing I know to catch her attention. She has seen me, but she don't know me. But he said, Mary. And when he said, Mary, he said, Rabboni, I don't know you by what I see, but I know you by your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John on the Isle of Patmos, the Bible said, he saw him and his hair was white, was wool. And he looked him all over and he said he was afraid. And he fell down. And all of a sudden he heard his voice. And the Bible said, when he heard his voice, he turned. He said, I'm afraid of what I see. But I'm not afraid of the voice. Because I've heard your voice before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you the burden of proof today. It's not going to be how many cancers you heal. It's not going to be how many you raise for the dead. But can you hear His voice? <laughs> hallelujah. While believing in God and God's existence gathers little resistance to humanity. But when they say you've heard His voice, hallelujah. 
The greatest compliment I can get in the world is when somebody come up every once in a while to my wife crying and say, Brother McKillop, you can take that bugging device out of our home. Sister McKillop, tell Brother McKillop you can do this. I said, well, how come? I said, well, when he was preaching today, the very words that we said at our table is what he said. Help me, Jesus. We don't have any problem with respect to the ministry if we can get them to hear his voice. Oh, Jesus. And I've got to have a progressive voice. We create another religion if we just hang around the articles of faith of one voice. Oh, help me, Jesus. Uh, Can I tell you that the revelation of the oneness of God is not what's going to hold the church so the gates of hell does not prevail against it. He looked at Peter, he said, upon this rock and the rock, there are folks that have got the revelation of oneness that have turned their back on the things of God. But he said, Peter, I want to tell you something. Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. But the future of this church depends. Can you continually hear the fresh voice of God? The reason you and I are here today is not because Peter got one revelation, but sitting on a housetop where he could have been listening to the news or reading the paper. He began to pray and a sheep was let down out of heaven and he said, listen, this is unclean. I can't slay and eat it. And a knock came at the door and he said, go doubting nothing. I want to continue to hear his voice. Oh, God, I'm not going to ever get done with this one today, I can tell you that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham heard a voice and said, I'll tell you what. Uh, he said, go, go, go slay your boy. He took him to the top of a mountain. That opens another whole can of worms. But anyhow, he took him to the top of the mountain. And when he did, he lifted his, he lifted his hand to slay. The future generation. But instead of rallying around the farmer voice and the last instructions, he said, I've heard something else and it may be in confliction with the last one, but I still know his voice. The future of this church and the next generations depends upon us hearing the voice of God. Brother Nance, man, that was powerful. Do you, do you find that you fight with the flesh when you preach sometimes? There's always that war. There's times when you want to put your hands on it and take care of it. And it's not the time, it's not the place, and it's not the will of God. And you can take that word... Can I be real honest with you? He's covered for a pile of my mistakes. I did it all good intentions, but if I'd have really been led by His Spirit, I would have. I want to hear His voice. I want to have revival. I want to pick up the attitude of God. And so Moses knew that, and he said, I'll tell you what, he said, I- I've got to get these people over here to, it's one thing for me to hear it, but I've got to get you to hear it. So he brought them to the mount. I'm going back to where he, he said, I can't really take, I can't really take people where I have not been. Now, let me just tell you my experience as far as preaching is concerned. Brother Lee, we'll face everything that the saints have to face. We'll suffer things the same way as the saints have to suffer. I walked in here today and I uh, 
didn't get a chance last night. I made myself scarce. But I walked over and I, I gave Grampy Bass a hug. And I told him, I said, coming down the car today, I said, uh, my wife and I was talking, I said, well, it's going to be different this year. Because uh, there's not going to be somebody there that was there last year. And brother, brother Wade Bass, it, it seems almost cruel to go on without them. But we must go on. And he is facing what he saw a lot of his people that he pastored face. And I'm going to face it. And you're going to face it. And Moses had an encounter at this mount with a burning bush. But when he brought the people back out, it was a whole mountain on fire. The reason he didn't take them to Canaan was because he didn't go over there first. Joshua went over. He couldn't take them to a place he'd never been. Well, that's quiet in here now. I can't lead people to a place I have never been. If I'm going to have a church that worships, I'm going to have to be the first one that worships. I do more for my church rather than tell them to worship, to go ahead and worship. If I can blend my spirit with God's, I won't have any problem getting my people to blend theirs with God's. Deuteronomy 4, 41 and 42, Moses served, severed three cities on this side, Jordan, toward the sun rising, that the slayer may flee thither, which should kill his neighbor unawares, and hated him not in times past, and that fleeing unto one of these cities, he might live. The Bible says that God made his... Uh, his ways known unto Moses, but his acts to the children of men. I need to not only know about his acts, but I want to know about his ways. I want to pick up his attitude towards things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so... He, uh, he built some cities and this was not going to be taken care of until Joshua's day, but he left instructions and there were other cities that was built. I believe there was 48 altogether. And he, he said, uh, uh, I want you to, I want to leave these instructions with you as he left. I want to leave them that you will build these cities. And, uh, I wonder where he got that and why he did it. But the Bible says, when Moses uh, asked God to reveal his glory, he received a response and he said, I beseech thee, show me the, thy glory. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquities and transgressions and sins, that will by no means clear the guilty. There's always a balance within the Scriptures. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. And he said, If I now have found favor or grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is in the stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquities and our sins, and take us for thine inheritance. I want to walk in God's divine ways. Moses picked up from God, I see your long-suffering. I see your merciful. I see your kindness. I see your reaching for mankind, not covering up sin, not trying to put the approval upon sin, but I am picking up a gentle, kind, loving Savior. And 
And Moses said, and stand with continuity with how he felt. He said, build you some cities. Because there's going to be some folks that didn't mean to make the mistake. But they've got a chance to be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm headed somewhere a little bit here. Praise God. And so the Bible said, walk in his ways. And then Exodus, the 32nd chapter, in the 32nd verse, he said, Yet now if thou wilt forgive their sins, and if not, blot me, I pray thee out of thy book. He slipped down off of the mount, having talked with God, having stepped into his glory. And I'm not going to take time to go through all uh, the proof of this right now. Because I'm, I feel, I feel like I need to get down to the meat of it. But that word brought me out was the waters of Noah. And one old Jewish writer I read said, he said that he believed that Moses made a cover up for a mistake that Noah did back in his day. He said that when Moses slipped down off of the mount and he looked at the children of Israel dancing around a golden calf. And he was stirred inside. And God come by and said, I'll tell you what, step aside. And we're going to wipe these people out. Something about Moses being in contact with God as he picked up his ways. As he picked up his heartbeat. As he picked up his feelings. Said, ah, you're not going to do that. It's not the acts alone that I'm interested in. But I know your ways. That's just not like you, God. You told me you was long-suffering. You told me you was gentle. You told me you was kind. And I picked it up. And I tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to make an investment in these people. If you block me out, block them out too. Well, would we like to have revival? What happened to Noah in his day? He said, I'm sick of what I see in. Hello. And he said, I'm sick of what... All of this that's going on. And he said, um, tell you what, you build a boat and I'll save you. And your family. And Noah said, it's a deal. And he saved him and his family. And Moses corrected the mistake that Noah made. By coming by with gentleness and kindness and mercy. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's always been a controversy in church. Well, I hope I'm not off the beaten track today. There's always a controversy in church. It started away back with Cain and Abel. Ended up with a lady at the well that said, we worship here and we worship there. But in a great house, there are vessels of honor and there are vessels of dishonor. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I read the story of Jacob, and uh, he's just some things. All right. In leadership, unless you're different than I am, you will fight with the old man. You will fight with bitterness. When Jacob heard that his brother Esau was coming and promised to kill him, he went out to meet him. There was something in Jacob that he desired authority can I tell you that the crave for authority has ruined a lot of things ambitions have ruined a lot of things 
And so Jacob said, uh, way back he was a he was a heel grabber when he was born, and then he stole the birthright, and uh, by hook or by crook, and then afterwards he stole the blessing, because he know he knew with the blessing came the authority. Some folks are trying to be blessed so that they can have authority. But he knew that the blessing, and when he wrestled with the angel, he said, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And the Lord had to weaken him. The Lord had to weaken him in order to get his attention. And when he realized that he couldn't get the authority by his own, when he realized he couldn't do it by himself, then they had a name change and, and he had power with God. And when one has power over another, then the one you have power over is no intimidation to you, no matter how rich they are. And when Esau came to Jacob, and Jacob was filthy rich, but Esau had 400 men, and he was not intimidated by Esau because of his finances, because he had power over him. But Esau had, or Jacob had a greater power than Esau had. Because when he came, the Bible said he bowed seven times before he got to Esau. And when it got to the place where he didn't care who had the authority, then it didn't make any difference. You don't envy over, you don't have envy if you have authority. You don't have to be envious over somebody else if you have authority over them. And if you have authority over yourself, you don't have to be envious over somebody else that has authority over you. The feeling of strength will be fulfilling when you will be free from envying somebody else. Hallelujah. The Bible says, he that rules his own spirit is like a city with walls. But the man was after it today, and I'm going to tell you something. We're not having problems with standards of holiness. We're having problems with people controlling spirits. A man who can rule his spirit will recreate himself. We're around false judgments, errors, mistakes, prejudice, and all the rest of it. But self-control is not self-destruction. If I cannot control myself, then I am in bad trouble. Hallelujah. If a man's spirit was always right, then he doesn't have to rule his spirit. I'm going to tell you something. There's a next generation we've got to save. And they're going to have to be saved by ruling the Spirit. We have walls to protect cities. And we fight on the walls because it's too late when they get into the city. We draw lines on walls because here's where we're fighting is on the wall. A city without wall. The Bible says if you... If you have, if you can't control your spirit, you're a, as a city without walls. Hallelujah. I hope I'm not going off today. Can I tell you something? If you're going to save your children, you've got to work on their spirit. Because if you work on their spirit, you will save the child. If you just work on the standards of holiness, you won't save the child. It's a city without walls. When you correct that little child and he rears up and you don't, you just make him do what you tell him to do, but you don't correct the spirit, you're making him raise up to be a full grown man without learning how to submit. And submission brings authority. If I'm going to have revival, I've got to submit myself to God. If I'm going to come against the enemy, I've got to submit myself to God. 
I can't come against the enemy because of who I am. I've got to come because I am in submission to God. Submit yourself therefore unto God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Revival will come to us if we can learn to submit. My feelings, my attitudes, my direction that I'm traveling. I want to have revival. I want to have a move of God. But I must submit myself. I must take prejudice out of me. I must take my ideas out of me. And no question in my mind that the boys, when they came up to Jacob, Joseph, and they heard him, and he was very immature. I don't want to go there right now, but he was very immature, and they looked at him, and they, 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 they pulled the fact out that, that uh, they, were, they were envious, and they were disgusted, and, and all the rest of it. And they looked at him, and they saw him wanting to, uh, wanting to dream, and he dreamed, and they already were upset. And he said, there were sheaves that bowed down before me. And he said, I, I tell you what, he said, when those sheaves bowed down, those boys got together and they said, you know what, we're always, we're always sheep herders. And we've been known by that. The Egyptians have always hated us because we were sheep herders. And that was our, that's our status quo. And that's what we, we feel about it all. And uh, we'd like to get rid of this guy. And I'm telling you, not only that, he's having another dream that is a supernatural revelation that he's got. And if that's the case, uh, we really are in trouble. And we're going away from the tradition that we have. Hallelujah. And then all of a sudden they decided to kill him. And you know, sometimes we can kill folks. Because we feel like they're pulling away from some tradition that we have had. And that never justifies us to kill them because I'm telling you, we don't know what God has in mind. And I'm not talking about compromise. You know very well what I believe in. Praise God. But ruling the Spirit is the test of greatness. And if you cannot conquer yourself, you cannot conquer, God cannot conquer you. If the only way that you can survive is by your own strength, you're walking on very dangerous grounds. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And so the conquering of a city came by force and by fear. And they ended up conquering a city against their wishes. Amen. I want to have the favor of God in my life. And it grows time from glory to glory. I want to be farther down the road today than I was yesterday. He said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. And I thought as a child. Immaturities is displayed by thinking, speaking, and understanding. And Joseph, when he was a child, he said, I, I tell you what, I, I dreamed a dream. And instead of him being quiet in his dream, he told them his dream. And working just on spirits and attitudes just a little bit. But he told them his dream. And he said, I'll tell you what. The sheaves were all bowing down to me. Maybe I'm just being vain today, but I can remember when I started the ministry, I was thinking of all the glories of what went with it and somewhat and looked at it. And, and there is a thrill to it, but there's also suffering that goes along with it. And he said, I, I, saw, I saw the sheaves bowing before me. And then he saw the stars and them bowing. And then he come on down to the end of life, and and uh, he'd gone through all his suffering and his pain, and he looked up and he saw some boys coming, and in his success the real trial came. He looked and saw the boys coming, and and he wept and and uh, looked at them, and after all that had taken place, now the real success of his leadership was going to show up. What kind of reaction were you going to have when you see them? And when he made himself known unto them, he let them know that he hadn't changed. And uh, he said, listen, how is, how is dad back home? And he said, uh, he's good, he's fine. Now the role had changed. Instead of me being here and you being down there bowing to me, it's I want to go down there. And pull you up to 
to where I am. And he said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to pack wagons full of supplies. And I don't want to be up here and you down there. But I've traveled before you. And I want you to come to where I am. Because the good of the land of Egypt is yours. And through all the struggles and the fights of bitterness that would like to attach itself to us, I don't want to get to the place where I'm harsh and hard and tough. But I want to hear His voice so that I can step into a dimension so I can reach down to where they are and bring them up to where I am. Because if I don't have a city of refuge, where is this hurting world going to end up? Lord, let me hear your voice. Praise God. God. Oh, let's stand today and let's give glory to the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Stop. 